سبيل الدموع سبيل مريح تنهدى يا صاحي كي تستريح وبث الدعاء الخفي الصريح يسعك الفضاء الرحيم الفسيح On the topic of talking about how you kept strong during all the abuse What kept your iman up while going through all of this? Listening to the Quran really really is therapeutic for me It soothes my heart The remembrance of Allah in terms of dhikr Prayer, like when I put my head down and I pray to Allah SWT and I connect with Allah and I speak to him, that keeps my faith strong. And I think reading about the Sahaba, reading about their lifestyles, going over their life and what they went through gives me strength because, you know, our objective is to be like the Prophet Sallallahu and the Sahabiyat. And, you know, when you read their stories, you see that they went through a lot of hardships. And at the end of the day, if you're not going through hardships and Allah's not testing you, then you should be worried because Allah says those he loves. One thing that really, really helps me is when I think about the less fortunate. Yeah. When I think about people that are going through war, where bombs are falling on them, the hardships yeah. that they're facing. When I think about people that have been diagnosed with terminal illnesses such as cancer or um, autoimmune diseases. When I think about people who have lost their children, I don't think there's anything worse for a mother than to lose one of her children. It then makes me think that what I'm going through is really nothing. And, you know, I always remember words of a sheikh, I can't remember his name, but he said whenever he faces a calamity, he always thinks about a calamity that's worse than his calamity. And it makes him, alhamdulillah, it makes him, you know, appreciate the calamity that he's got. So when we look at it in perspective, there's always something that could be worse than what you're going through. And if my test is being ridiculed and abused because of the way I dress, then I welcome it, alhamdulillah, because when I think about how others are suffering, like dire poverty, you know, I think about women who their children are starving to death. Your child looks to you as the mother or the father for sustenance, for, for provision, you know, the thought that you can't provide that for your child it must be, you know, heartbreaking, heart wrenching. And so alhamdulillah I'm not faced with that. So these are the things that keep me strong. I understand your point when you're saying about poverty and how you kind of appreciate the situation that you're in. Because a lot of time something small will happen and it will be big to me. But then I deep the fact that there's so much horrible things going on in the world that I just look at my life and I'm like it could be worse. It could be, and it, you know, a lot know. of times, you know, people say we have first world problems. I'm not belittling what I went through, but in the grand scheme of things, my life could be much worse. That's why this year, I'm kind of like focusing on a lot of charity work, even stuff like anti-bullying and stuff like that. That's like one of my main focuses that I'm definitely going to be doing this year. Good. Inshallah. My question to you, a personal question, would be if you could like give advice or tips to your 17 year old self when you just found the significance of Islam and the beauty of Islam what would you tell yourself what would you do differently or not even differently like, what would you advise yourself I advise myself to just slow down a bit just embrace and enjoy the sweetness of Iman because when I first started practicing I was like so hungry to learn and so I kind of like read and studied so, so much and then I started immediately teaching. And so I didn't really get a chance to absorb and just love being a practicing person. If you can, I just became so engrossed in disseminating and teaching and providing a resource for people that I didn't spend enough time on me because I dedicated myself to others. Alhamdulillah, I'm glad I did that. But I would say to my 17 year old self, be a bit more selfish because I was too selfless. Mm. I and mean, obviously once I had my children, it then became harder to Love. give myself. No, I learned a lot, alhamdulillah, but I didn't enjoy myself in the deen. The last question overall is, when we go places like Speaker's Corner for example, catch us there. Or when you read comments when you're on live or when the topic of naqab comes up and people are talking about like oppression or abuse or if you're going through all of this hate and all of this torture around the niqab and they tell you okay if this is happening to you why don't you just take it off 
and free yourself from the pain and suffering. What's your opinion on basically that? I understand, you know, from the brothers, my brothers in Islam, when they see that I'm abused or subjugated by non-Muslims who sort of really, really hate the niqab, the easiest thing would be for me to take it off and hence be safer. I do get it. And I don't blame sisters who have been through oppression or have been attacked that take it off. I don't think any less of them. I don't think any less of sisters who don't wear the niqab. Alhamdulillah, we're all going to be judged by Allah separately. And we all have weaknesses and strengths. One of my strengths is my hijab, my niqab. I don't find it hard. I don't find it embarrassing. I don't feel intimidated when I see people. You know, I've embraced it. I love it. I enjoy it. It's a part of me. You know, I don't feel that I can't be myself with my niqab. And so why should I take it off? Because if I take it off, the abusers, the racists, the Islamophobes, they've won. And, you know, that's not what I'm about. I'm, I'm a strong person and I believe in what I believe in and I will wear my niqab. If in the future I decided for whatever reason that I wanted to take it off, then I would. But it'd have to be my decision. It'd have to be something that came from me, you know. If I decided I can no longer wear the niqab for health reasons then I would take it off and I would take it off proudly I wouldn't be ashamed you know I wouldn't feel intimidated because my niqab is between me and Allah you know that's my relationship with Allah so how I put it on is between me and Allah if I was to take it off it would be between me and Allah and this is the thing you know your relationship with your hijab your relationship with your salat your relationship with your soul your zakat is between you and Allah it's a personal thing I don't think anybody has the right to get involved in that you know it's a personal thing and lastly I would say to sisters that wear niqab some sisters wear niqab because they, they don't believe it's far but they believe it's mustahab you know, that's okay as well. You know, your intentions have to be really, really clear. You need to do it for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because if you do it for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, through doing it to please Allah, you get the strength. Because you know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, he's written everything down. His angels write everything down. And no hardship that you go through is unwritten or unseen. But if you do it for people, if you do it for status, if you do it to fit in, people always let you down. Mm. Do you understand? But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he never, ever, ever lets you down. So, you know, because I did it for Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's between me and Allah, it's my identity, it's my face, you know, that's what keeps me strong. So sisters, if you wear the niqab, keep strong, don't let anybody beat you down, don't let anybody make you feel less than who you are. But Islam teaches us when we're in this society that we can integrate, but we don't have to assimilate, and so we can be constructive, active members of society and still wear the niqab and don't let anybody tell you otherwise. And with that, Jazakumallah Khairan, please subscribe, please comment if you want me to do any other videos. If you have any questions for me, I'm on Instagram, The Lady, Lady in, in the, the veil. veil. I have received all your questions. Inshallah, I will hopefully do videos on them in the future. Sorry that I took so long. My editor, Sister. producer, my assistant was away and very busy. She's back now. And so hopefully, Inshallah, we'll do more videos. Yeah. And if you would like for more mother and daughter videos yes make sure to comment down below and we'll make it happen Yes, I can find the